Oh, yes. We got ourselves a team in New York. That's right. That's right. Today was the debut of Josh Hart as a Nick. And man, did he deliver. Did the whole team deliver. Yes, it was the second game of a back-to-back, -back, so it's not going to be a lot of defense played. But Hart didn't play last night. Hart played tonight, and man, did he look beautiful. He stole my heart. Stole my heart. It was a fantastic, fantastic performance. He is a dog, self-proclaimed dog. There is a dog loose at MSG, and he's wrecking havoc on the opponent. He's wrecking havoc on the glass, off the glass, picking up every rebound, getting steals. Got four steals tonight. Four steals. And our two big of our, of our mid three, 30 points plus each. Again, two nights in a row. And even the bad man Barrett came through tonight. That's right. It was a much needed win because now every single game that's played from this moment on is an important game. We can't lose. We can't just like, oh, well, this one's more important than the other. No, they're all equally as important. And it was a beautiful thing. The Knicks beat the Utah Jazz at MSG. 126, 120, and now they are 31 and 27. Boo! Still a half game, a game and a half behind the Miami Heat, who have won three in a row recently. So that's why every game matters. Every single game matters. Let's get to it. Here we go. I even got highlights for you guys tonight. Here it is. Jalen Brunson was an animal. 38 points for the man. What a monster performance for him. Super clutch. And I'm sh and I mean only ended up with five assists, but man, did he make buckets? The New York Knicks. This was a game. The New York Knicks out rebounded the Utah Jazz, 63 to 49. And that's a team that at one time had three seven footers out on the court, three seven footers, and we out rebounded these dudes. Yes, that's right. Second chance points. Want to talk to me about second chance points? Knicks were a plus 16. 24 to 8. 24 to 8. And that is that's what happens when you get offensive rebounds, which we were beasts. Isaiah Hartenstein, 14 boards himself. Six of them, I think six of them were offensive rebounds. Lots of second chance points. And that helps tremendously. Tremendously. Especially against a team who can shoot. I mean, the Jazz can shoot. The Jazz tonight shot 51.1% and lost. That's right. They lost. They lost to the Knicks. Uh, before we get to the stats, uh, before we get to the highlights, let me show you these things here. Here he is. Julius Randle, thanks to Knicks Muse, uh, tweeted this out. RMB uh, last two nights. Julius Randle, 30 points last night, 31 points tonight. Six rebounds, two assists, 46% uh, percent field goal shooting. But look at Jalen Brunson. He followed up his 30 uh, points last night with 38 tonight. Three boards, five assists on 50% shooting. Outstanding shooting. Look, 50%, 63% last night. Uh, he's, he, you know, they tweeted out, the Knicks have two bona fide stars. That's, I've been saying it, you guys know. Have you guys been watching? I've been saying, we currently, I know we cry, oh, we don't have superstars, but meanwhile, we have two guys that are playing like superstars. So we, we, we have to catch up to the reality of what's happening here with these Knicks. This is a good team. This team just out-rebounded the shit out of the Utah Jazz with the three seven-footers without the best offensive rebounder in the game on the court. Mitch Robinson is still out. There was a news report, came out today, or was it yesterday? Uh, Mitch will be reevaluated after the All-Star break, which is pretty much what I thought. I thought he wouldn't come back until the end of February. So it's right in line with that. Let's hope this sticks with that. But can you imagine... When we're out, when we got guys out there on the court, when we got like IQ, Grimes, Hart, and Mitch out on the court, you can put any of the other big three with those one, with those four, and that is going to be a productive lineup. It's going to be a stifling lineup, a lineup that suffocates the opponent and throws them off their rhythm and game. That is the way you win in the NBA. I love what I just saw tonight because it looked tight. The Jazz didn't want to give up this game, but the Knicks took it, took it at the end. Beautiful. Loved it, especially when you consider 
When you consider that they, they were shooting the lights out. It's tremendous. Even still, even so, the game was once tied midway through the fourth quarter. And at that point, you kind of felt, oh, no. Is this, are the Knicks going to do a Knicks again? Are they going to pull another fourth quarter meltdown? Nope. Didn't happen. Did not happen. And a big reason why it didn't happen, because of this guy. Here you go. New York Basketball tweeted this out. Josh Hart, key off the bench and down the stretch in his first game and first win as a Nick. 11 points, two of three from the three-point line. He hit two big three-point buckets late in that fourth quarter. In the, la in the last, like, three minutes of that fourth quarter. Big ones. Big ones. I love it. He just let it fly. Uh, one was from the corner. I believe the other one was just above the left break. Beautiful. Seven boards, four of them offensive, four dimes, four steals. A plus five, all in 26 minutes of play. I got to tell you, man, that is some good, good production right there from a bench player. If he stays on a bench... Honestly, if he stays on the bench, it's up to Quinton Grimes to keep him on the bench. Because as far, I mean, you know, <laughs> opposite to what a lot of people think, that he might start over RJ, he is never starting over RJ. And RJ proved it tonight. In fact, look, RJ got his 20 points. Uh, he got off to a slow start, but he ended up finished strong. Got a big three-point bucket himself, six of eight from the free throw line, two of six from the three-point line, six boards, three assists, only one turnover, ended up with a plus six. And he played some good defense in that fourth quarter. Some good defense. Uh, I wanted to pull up something here. Something concerning about uh, our guy, Quinton Grimes. Our guy, Quinton Grimes, in the last 10 games, not including tonight, not including tonight, is shooting 27.3% from the three-point line on five-and-a-half attempts per game. That's not good, <laughs> obviously. Uh, he's even shooting 44% overall. Uh, I, I, He's going through a little bit of a slump. Do I believe he's going to get through it? Yes, I do. I believe in Quentin Grimes. A lot of what happens here is you have to stay – you have to keep believing in your players. Because they're not machines. This is not an assembly line. You know, there's ebbs and flows. Who knows what's going on with their lives? Uh, there could be stuff off court. There could be like a weird little nagging little finger thing. It's not like enough to make you sit out, and but it's also bothering you. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm just saying you don't know. You can't look. You can't immediately jump on people. Like everyone's been jumping on RJ. I don't know what the hell is going on. With, with, with the Knicks community right now. They, they want to light this guy on fire. Throw him out of town. What's, what's the matter with you guys? You guys don't understand what we got here? 22 years old. He's averaging 20 points a game. It ain't easy to average 20 points a game in the NBA. This is his second season doing it. Cool your engines. He's going to be... I, I say he's going to be fine. When I say fine, I mean he's going to be that legit fringe all-star. Eventually. Okay, he didn't do it in season four the way everyone wants him to. Well, so what? You're just gonna throw the baby out with the bathwater? Think, think, think it through. Who are you gonna get? Who's gonna replace him? It just it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. It almost makes me not want to get. It makes me want to get off Twitter. The garbage that's out there. It's just way too much. Dial it down. You can critique the guy. But to call him trash and a bust and a bum, I don't get it. This is our guy. You got to support him. We are fans. Support him. He's trying his best. Can he do better? Absolutely. And I'll call him out when he fucks up on something. But to just light the man on fire, call him a dumpster fire and get him out of town, it just is counterproductive. It's counterproductive. Just bear that in mind. And also... Also, just to put a little 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 sauce on this, little little spice on this right now, just so you guys know, for the last 30 games, the last 30 games, RJ shooting 38% from the three-point line. You want to talk to me about a bust? Yes. Is his defense lacking? Absolutely. Can he improve on that? Absolutely. So cool your engines. We have a good team. Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Jesus, you guys are freaking out out there. Man. 
<sighs> Dude, you guys would have completely shit yourselves if you had to watch Johnny Starks play. This guy right here, this guy, there's a reason why his nickname was Feast or Famine. Feast or Famine. One night, he fucking lights it up. The next night, he's two for 12. But the, you knew that he had something in him, and he carried us all the way to the finals. Whether Pat Riley should have sat him in that last uh, half or whatever, is, 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 it's beyond debatable. He should have. He admitted it himself. But that's a coach. But we would never have gotten to that point without Johnny Starks. Just bear all of that in mind. Bear all of that in mind. Baby with the bathwater, no. No. All right, let's get to some highlights. <laughs> let's get to some highlights here. All right, here we go. So uh, the game started off, uh, it was a lot of back and forth. Here, RJ starts off with a bucket here. Uh, what happened on this play? Oh, Brunson. Look at that. Man, Brunson was outstanding. The guy, let me tell you, when he wants to get a bucket, he's going to get it. And in some ways, it's it kind of works against him at times. Because sometimes he makes a decision, and then he blocks out anything else that might develop on the court in front of him. And there are times where he misses easier opportunities, a guy that might be more wide open. Look at Hart. That was his first, I think that was his first attempt. He didn't, didn't finish it, but uh, Hartenstein finished it. Nice game for Hartenstein. Uh, really, uh, his, his well, his, his rebounding was what it was all about. Oh, but Emmanuel quickly for the long. Emmanuel quickly is a great example of what I'm talking about. Uh, and I tweeted it out during the game. There was a stretch there where everyone wanted to pack his bag, send him elsewhere, get rid of him, blah, blah, blah. He's not a point guard. People laughed at me here pretty much because of it. Now look at him. He is now the highest rated defensive player in the NBA in on-off Raptor stats. He, is the, he has the best Raptor stat rating. Let me show you this here. He is a plus 8.3 in on-off Raptor, number one. That's above uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., who is a 5.6, Joel Embiid. There's like no one even close to him. The next closest is 5.8. Dennis, Dennis Smith Jr. is here, but he's only played uh, eight, four, 846 minutes. Quickly's played 1,532 minutes. And, and not only that, in the on-off Raptor, not only in, is he number one defensively in the entire NBA, better than Franz Wagner, Damian Lee, Josh Green. Uh, we also got Mitch, who's 10th up here with a 4.5. Uh, Caruso's at a 4.4. You know, better than all those guys, right? But his overall Raptor score, which combines the uh, the offense and the defense, he's 30th in the entire NBA with a plus 4.9. 30th. You know, tied with uh, Michael Porter Jr. Tied with guys like that. So his pro productivity is tremendous. I said, don't worry. His shot's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. And there it is right there. Beautiful behind-the-back pass from uh, Julius Randle. For Emmanuel quickly there. Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, yes, so RJ has been uh, fairly productive uh, despite uh, his defensive woes. And he better be. He better be. Because, you know, he's not a shooter. He's a scorer. He's a winner. That's what he is. He needs to definitely step up his defensive intensity. And I saw it in that fourth quarter from him. Definitely saw it. And I, I, hoped, I hoped he... He's starting to really click. Larry, oh, look at that nice shot right there. I hope he's. I hope he doesn't take take possessions off. He can't anymore. He must understand that that is just not going to cut it anymore at all. I mean, it's also you know it helps when you when you bring on more guys like Hart onto the team. It motivates other guys to play their best defense, their their best defense themselves. So let's hope that that has that ripple effect on on, on RJ as well. Uh, RJ has the desire. He wants to be. He wants. He wants to be a great defensive player. We don't need him to be a great defensive player. If he was, I mean, Hart is a great defensive player. If if RJ played the defense Hart does, he'd be like a top fifteen, top twenty five player in the NBA. But he not. He doesn't. You know, all we need him to be is adequate. Let's start there, and then build upon that.
build upon that. Get better and get better and get better. I'm looking for a very strong final uh, 25 games of the season for RJ. But this man here, Julius Randle, he's averaging over 27 points per game recently. Uh, just outstanding. I think uh, 12 rebounds or something. It's just something uh, just crazy, crazy stats. He really is playing like a superstar. He really is. I love that play right there. It almost looked like RJ was going to totally flub the ball. All right, so now the game was tied. 101, six and a half, six minutes, about seven minutes left in the game. This is the, this is it. Beautiful. Three-pointer from Josh Hart to give the, Knick, the Knicks the lead again. No hesitation. Went straight up. Let it fly. That corner three is the easiest three in the NBA. And he let it fly and swished it. Beautiful. And look at it. Look at uh, Randall right here. Oh, no. Actually, it was Hart. I forgot. That was the uh, offensive rebound and a dunk right there. Game is still tied. Four and a half minutes. Because Utah was scoring as well. You know, when, when Utah played as well last night, so teams play back-to-back. -back, usually, uh, it's the offense that suffers. But tonight, it was the defense that suffered. So, but look at that sweet three right there. The Knicks started pulling away. They got a little space. Here's 118, 112 with two little over two left. And then Julius Randle comes in for the dunk. It wasn't quite a dunk. And then RJ follows it up with a beautiful drive. Oh, no, that was the beginning of the play. Sorry. All right, so we saw the highlights. Let's get back to this. All right, here we go. So look at Emmanuel quickly. 23 minutes, 6 of 9. 3 of 6 from the three-point line. Five rebounds, only one dime, but 15 points for my son, Emmanuel quickly. Josh Hart in his debut, 11 points, seven rebounds, four assists, and four steals. Outstanding, two of three from the three-point line. The Knicks overall didn't shoot that great from the three-point line, only 33%, uh, 12 of 36. Remember the other previous game? I think they only put up 33 pointers or something. They put up 36 tonight. They need to be up around 38 at minimum, 38 to 40. 38 is what I'll take. So they got close enough there. And as you can see, even if you're missing three pointers early on, early in the early part of the game, you can't go away from it. You just cannot because the game doesn't care. The clock doesn't care. It doesn't care that you missed a three pointer in the first quarter. If it's the fourth quarter and the game is under ten points, under ten, di under, under, you know, under double digits, the other team is going to keep shooting the three. So you have to as well. It's just math, just math and time. It's just limited. We're talking about parameters, and if the, but the Knicks did it tonight. They did. You saw our heart. Uh, our heart hit a big one. You saw Brunson hit a big one. So that and uh, and uh, RJ hit a big one as well. Just got to keep doing that. Got to keep following through on that. Uh, Randall, uh, not a great uh, night for him from the three point line. Three of eleven, but uh, finished with thirty one points, six boards only for him. Surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly, you'd be. You'd be I'm surprised on a night when the Knicks uh, out rebounded the other team with three seven footers that uh, are. I mean, Randall's one of the best rebounders in the game. He only ended up with six tonight, but didn't matter because look at uh, Jericho Sims. Ten boards for him. Jericho actually had a very very nice game defensively for him. Uh, I liked what I saw from him, even though he only his stat line doesn't look as that exciting. But he definitely played a decent game. Uh, Jalen Brunson, 50%. He shot 50% from the uh, field goal, 40% uh, from the three-point line, uh, and he ended up with 38 points, almost 40 points. Wow, outstanding. R.J. Barrett, 20 points, uh, two of six from the three-point line, six boards, three dimes for him in 34 minutes. Quinton Grimes continues to struggle offensively, and he has gotten burned defensively as well. Uh, there might be some, there might be some fatigue going on. Uh, I tweeted out uh, earlier today that uh, since December 4th, uh, the Knicks have four players that are all averaging 35 minutes or more per game. They are, there's only one, they're the only team with a winning record that is averaging that many, has four players averaging that many minutes per game. The only other team that's doing it is the Toronto Raptors, and they have a losing record. So, it's the, the minutes are going to be an issue, and, I th and that's why I'm very happy about the acquisition of Josh Hart. I believe that Thibs is it now is going to be able to spread minutes out a little bit more, even though tonight Randall did end up playing 39, and so did Brunson. But remember, we're, we're still without Mitch, who's a very key player in this situation. 
So let's hope that uh, that changes there. Uh, look at Isaiah Hartenstein. Six minutes, 14 rebounds, like I said, and six of those were offensive rebounds. And let's see. Uh, you can see it here. Ah, it's just – oh, yeah, right there. You can see it. It's just cut off right there. Six uh, offensive rebounds, uh, eight defensive rebounds. Josh Hart, four offensive rebounds, three defensive rebounds. Outstanding. He is. He's, he's, he is definitely one of the best – uh, even though he often plays the small forward role, uh, position, he is by far one of the best, if not the best, rebounding guard in the NBA. So now we've added that to a a, a, a position of strength that we had. We that was an advantage that we had, which was his re, uh, his team rebounding. We are one of the best rebounding teams in the NBA, and we are the best offensive rebounding team in the NBA. So now we added someone to reinforce that. But he also brings the added layer of he moves the ball well. He knows where to find the open guy. He passes the ball. Look, he ended up with four rebound, four assists tonight. And the four steals, just fantastic. He fills those lanes. He's everything that we wanted Cam to be, honestly. You know, and, but even though Cam has a better offensive game, just in terms of all-around game, defensively, a glue guy, a dog, passionate, tenacious, he gives you all of that. He's like a slightly larger version of Deuce McBride. So I'm very, very happy with this acquisition. I'm very, very happy. Obi Toppin is the one. It's got to be concerned right now. He's got to be concerned, but I don't think uh, I don't think he's in any any immediate danger of like being pushed out of the rotation. But he should look at the situation right now and see that he needs to do more. He needs to find ways to be able to contribute while he's on the court that aren't all about scoring. Now, there was a play when RJ had the ball out by the three-point line, and once again, Obi was wide open under the basket, and RJ missed him. There was a previous game, and I think last night, uh, it wasn't RJ who missed him. It was... Was it uh, well? RJ missed. Uh, RJ missed Isaiah Hardenstein on on that on that fast break. He ended up giving it to Brunson, which he shouldn't have. Uh, but a lot, but also that was because Brunson was in his sight line and Brunson was calling for the ball. Now, why would Brunson call for the ball when he sees Isaiah Hardenstein there? It's just it was just you know it was a lot of confusion there. But the Knicks tonight was were very good on, on the fast break points. Uh, they actually won the fast break battle tonight. Uh, yeah, eighteen to eleven. So very happy with that. Uh, you can see uh, Laurie Markin and man, the Jazz got themselves a player. They really do. Uh, 29 points, but only five rebounds, three assists. Uh, Kessler, 14, uh, 15 rebounds for that that beast. And uh, I can't remember how many. I can't remember how many blocks he got, but he got at least three himself. Uh, Clarkson, uh, you know, Clyde couldn't stop praising Clarkson, but then look at the stat line. He needed 23 field goal attempts to get 24 points. One of eight from the three-point line. You know, sometimes things look all good and flashy, but when you actually look at the summation of it all, it's not that impactful when it comes to actual winning. So, there you go. Uh, Colin Sexton, got to say, uh, you know, he's holding his own. Six of 12. Uh, the three-point shot's not there for him uh, right now. Five dimes for him, 15 points. Uh, but uh, Taylor Horton Tucker... Uh, very frustrating player here for the, for the Lakers. Uh, they tra they finally traded him away. Uh, he ended up with 23 points himself. Uh, got to the free throw line several times, a couple of times, I believe. Uh, let's see. Then look, the Jazz only shot 28.1% from the three point line, nine of 32 overall. So they, but that's why they were beasts inside the arc. Uh, you can see the points in the paint. They scored 64. They had a plus. Wow, wow. They had a plus 16 right there in the paint. Hmm. Man, so that we had a plus 7 in fast break points. Hmm. The assists, we only had 18 assists tonight. Definitely got to keep moving that ball. Can't let it stick. That's when we That's when we become so easy to guard when we let the ball stick. So got to keep that moving. Knicks' uh, largest lead was 12. Utah had a two-point lead. The Knicks end up winning this game tonight, 126-120. Now in seventh place, firmly a game and a half behind the Miami Heat, and we are coming for you, Miami. We're coming for you, Miami. We're coming for you, Brooklyn, and we're coming for you, Cleveland. This is a good team. 
NBA's on notice. The Knicks are for real. That's right. All right, thank you so much for watching this. Again, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, drop your comments, and I will see you around the Knicks bar.